Good night, nurse. It's Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. Welcome back to X-Play. Today we have the opportunity to play a Japanese import game so strange we have not the words to describe it. All we can tell you is that you must watch this review of Katamari Damashi. Every once in a while, a Japanese import game comes along that is so weird, we can only assume drugs were involved in its creation. There is no other explanation for Katamari Damashi and its colorful explosion of bad music, rainbows, singing ducks, and what the hell is that panda doing? Apparently, psychedelic substances are stronger in Japan. The moment your PS2 boots up, the first words that escape your lips are guaranteed to be, what the f***? Katamari Damashi also happens to be one of the most simple and addictively fun games to hit the PS2 in years. No doubt stoners, ravers, and kindergartners will all find something to love, or at least be pleasantly mesmerized by, in it. The premise is simple. You are a prince. Your father is the rather fabulous yet existential king of the cosmos. One night, he gets wasted and accidentally knocks all the stars out of the sky. Stars have suddenly vanished from the sky. He also wears impossibly snug trousers, vomits rainbows, and says things like this. Um. Ever the cosmic deadbeat, your drunky dandy dad tasks you, his minuscule heir, to repair the night sky by collecting junk on a special gravity ball to create new stars. Apparently, no planet in the cosmos is as full of stuff as the Earth, and so begins the prince's quest to roll up everything in sight. This leads to one of the strangest tutorial diagrams in video game history. Each level starts with a time limit and a goal radius for the new star. You begin using the analog sticks to collect tiny items like pins, mahjong tiles, and dice, and then work your way up to larger objects. Soon, you'll be collecting hapless critters in your Katamari. Wings, flop your last! Mwahaha! With the addition of each struggling feline, pig, or roll of toilet paper, the Katamari increases in size, allowing you to go after larger objects, like handcuffs and poisonous frogs. Perhaps someone was licking those when they designed this game. Oh, and people! <laughs> Did I mention you can pick up people? <laughs> like these sumo wrestlers, who are apparently also zombies. <laughs> Nothing warms the cockles of your psychedelic heart quite like the screams of innocent bystanders as they join a rolling, writhing mass of humanity. <laughs> oh look, you can crash a ball of children into a crowd of screaming children and then doom them to a flaming stellar state. Yeah, I just burned up people to make a star. <laughs> Doesn't seem so whimsical now, does it? Oh, and in case you still doubted that this game was designed by someone three tabs away from an overdose, watch this cutscene. Oh, I feel it. I feel the cosmos. Taurus came charging back. Oh. Hello, she's tripping and going into a K-hole simultaneously. So yummy. Impressive is the game's ever-changing sense of scale. As the ball grows, the camera seamlessly pulls out, and you'll be able to pick up larger objects, like, I don't know, buildings, islands, and the god of thunder? Sure, the visuals are simplistic, but the technical limitations lend the game a distinct Lego-like aesthetic, and synced with the all-suffusing strangeness as a wonderful soundtrack as varied as the crap you'll be picking up. <laughs> You have to admire the Japanese. When they want to do weird, they don't hold back. Katamari Damashi is interactive happiness. Charming, exuberant, shameless, and it doesn't make a damn bit of sense. We only wish it were longer. Did he just say cancer was yummy? We give it a four out of five. <laughs> Yay, so fun and weird. Yes, I tripped and I can't get down. Uh-huh, thanks that, for that. That game was, like, 
everything from the 60s rolled into three. And it's actually very addictive too, which is cool. And if you want to oh, know... Oh, look, it's addictive as well. <laughs> that works out so nice. The kids, you know... If you want to know more about our show, go to our website, g4techtv.com slash xplay. There's a game there too. Good night. Bye. <laughs> Bonus! Katamari Damashi, as everyone who plays it knows, is like having your brain injected with a syringe mixed with rainbows, music, and Hunter S. Thompson. And just like a bad drug addiction, Katamari Damashi will send you spiraling out of control as you try to come to grips with all the horrible things you did while under its influence. At the end of the game, after you finish making the moon, you win respect from your father, who plays a kick at Samba, while the prince dances his ass off. Then they go flying off around the world, looking evil and checking out dinosaurs. Once this is completed, you can try to roll up all the countries of the world. Yeah, all the countries. Be careful, or you'll miss the small places like the Federated States of Micronesia, the Vatican, or Antarctica. Damn it, how did I miss Antarctica? Once you've collected all 195 countries, you'll be treated to a name comments like these. Well, I heard the moon only shows one side to Earth. However, this ending, while the beautiful onslaught to the cerebral cortex, never gives a sense of who the king of all the cosmos and his son really are. The game does give little clues. The king plays the guitar, and the prince likes to dance. Who are these celestial beings, really? Well, a little boy is able to answer this question in five words. Are you ready? Can you handle this mind-expanding knowledge? Or will you run away in fear of having your world torn apart and molested like a freshman in a frat house? Ready or not, here it comes. X-Play presents Insignificant Spoiler Theater. After you've beaten the game, play the moon-making level again. Try as best as you can to make the Katamari as large as possible. For example, if you are spinning in a sea of nothing and floating cherubs are circling your ball of stuff, you'll be fine. Then, when the king asks you if you want to make it a moon or stardust, choose stardust. After he breaks up all the contents of the world into cosmic debris, you'll be treated to this mind-blowing, heart-wrenching piece of universal truth. The prince broke up the moon he just made. Rich people sure are different. Yes, they are. Oh my God, I see it now. Rich people are different. Thank you. Thank you, Katamari Damashi, for reminding us that rich people have money and we don't.